Let's see how my voice sounds today. I actually had a, a lousy night. I think I'm not getting any better today. So just for fun, I'm going to try and do a lightning round on this tag, off the top of your head tag. Uh, I looked ahead at a couple of questions, and I already don't have answers. I'm just going to practice doing a faster video here. So number one, what was and this tag is created by the library mouse. Thank you for that. What was your favorite picture book as a child? I remember it was definitely Green Eggs and Ham. We didn't have a lot of them, and we read that one, me and my brother, and my mom read it to us many, many, many times. I think later we had The Cat in the Hat, and The Cat in the Hat comes back both. The Cat in the Hat comes back was a real bust. Uh, Green Eggs and Ham, my favorite picture book of all time. Just loved looking at it, and I... Green Ham still looks good to me. What series did you love as a child? I liked the Hardy Boys. I liked Tarzan. I liked all the stuff I've talked about before. Number three, the worst book you have read or tried to read. Oh my God, this is, see, this is a tough one. This is, this is when, when you have to think. It's like we have to talk about it. The worst book I've ever read or tried to read. I don't really judge books that I haven't read. I just assume it's not for me. Those Hunger Games books were pretty annoying. They're not for me, but um, they weren't written for someone like me. But there's a lot of uh, reality TV stuff in there. They're not the worst, though. Uh, I'll just go ahead and kill more sacred cows. The second Harry Potter book, first one I liked, I liked the Quidditch game. The second one, I think it takes place in a bathroom. Uh, mostly haunted men's room or something. When I came to the end of it, I suddenly realized, well, five more left, and I almost simultaneously realized that you don't have to do this. No one's going to care. You do not have to read the Harry Potter books just because everybody else read them. Because while I was reading them, you know, when they were coming out, I was already an adult. Uh, your favorite reading or book memory? One memory? Jeez. I had a traumatic one when I lost The Son of Tarzan, the the fourth Edgar S. Burroughs Tarzan novel, The Son of Tarzan. I was walking home from school, I had the bantam cover, the, the bantam white covers, dropped it in the snow, went back looking for it, couldn't find it, looked for it for hours, freaked out, begged for another coffee, for, for a copy for Christmas, and then begged my mother because I had an idea that she had bought it. Uh, begged her to give it to me early, and she did. She got so sick of me complaining. She was like, all right, here's a stupid book. Here, take it, read it, because I had only read it like half of it, and I could not stand on knowing where, where, how it was going to end. So maybe that's a good memory overall. A book you loved as a movie. Hmm. Doesn't usually happen. Probably something where I saw the movie first. I, I guess I'll go with the Maltese Falcon. Very, very, very. Of course, I mean the John Huston one. Don't go there with those other earlier versions. They're not good. I don't care. Only the John Huston uh, version is good. I never saw the the later remake with uh, in color with Robert Mitchum um, when he's too old to play Raymond Chandler, but. Maltese Falcon, I happened to read it. I don't know if I told this story before. I'm not going to tell the whole story here. I'll say, I'm going to do a review of Maltese Falcon one time. The dialogue in that book is so good that they just they just lifted it right off the page into the... I remember seeing it and reading it very close together. And, and even in the pre-streaming uh, area, the, the pre-physical media area where you couldn't go back and check, where you just had to wait for it to be on TV or... Or at a revival theater or at the library or something. I could see that it was word for word perfect. Just, and that's that's William Faulkner and Lee Brackett, two great writers from two different uh, uh, streams of American fiction, genre fiction, and literary fiction. And I, and I guess the third one was uh, I guess John Huston also collaborated on the screenplay. The only thing that's not correct is the physical appearance of uh, Humphrey Bogart, who does not look at all like the devilish sort of uh, character uh, of Sam Spade as described by 
by Hammett, by you know, it's Bogart. Who who could ever play that better? Okay, so a book you wish they would make into a movie. I wish they would stop making books into movies. Probably because even from an early age, I always thought, like, what would the movie of this be like? And so naturally, I'm always disappointed if it's something I like. I wish they hadn't made Three Body Problem. I haven't seen it. I wish... Uh, I'd probably go see Ubik, Ubik if they made it from Philip K. Dick's original script, uh, just to see what they do with it. I'm just saying that off the top of my head. Uh, a book character that you would like as a friend. Um, John Watson is a pretty loyal friend. I don't know if I'd want to be friends with uh, Holmes. Watson's a good guy. He's always up for something. He's always like, yeah, I'll have my buddy take over my practice. Or, you know, my patients can wait. Well, let's go off on an adventure. My wife, she didn't care. He's, so he's a, he's a friend who's always there for a friend. John H. Watson, Dr. Watson, that's who I'll say. A place you went to visit because of a book you read. Oh, every Mars, Barsoom, Opar. I tend on these kind of, I, I see on these tags, I always go back to old, old books I've known for a long time. Let's not kid ourselves, a lot of these places I would not survive well in, you know. I'm not going to say, like, uh, medieval Japan or something after re reading Shogun or Dodge City or, or uh, Laredo after reading uh, Lonesome Dove and Streets of Laredo or... Here's a weird one from when I was a kid. I really wanted to go to Maine. Maine, Northeast United States, most northern state, because I read MASH, the book MASH, which was um, a very flat written book, not not an exciting book, I just read it because I was into the TV show when it was on and, and the movie, And but Hawkeye Pierce was from Maine, and he was always talking about it, you know, because he's stuck in Korea having this miserable time, and he's talking about Maine, his dad, and stuff like that. Wow, that'd be really good. And then reading probably Vonnegut, I think, probably Cat's Cradle, I think there's some scenes in Maine, or maybe it's somewhere else in New England. So I really, when I was in high school in Nevada, because Maine sounded so different with, you know, with water and uh, trees and stuff that we didn't have in my part of Nevada, so... This place I always wanted to go. I never got there, and I don't know if I ever will now because I don't know if I'm going to that part of the country again. Who knows? A book carry a friend, a place you would visit because of a book you read. And it's not even uh, his writing, uh, Richard Hooker's writing, it's, which was, was, as I remember, was not very engaging. So it's just the concept of this guy wanting to go home and talk to his dad in Maine and go fishing with his dad. And, for lobster and stuff like that. Probably just because I was hungry for a lobster when I was reading the book in high school. Okay, a nonfiction book you would recommend? Well, I've read the uh, first volume of The Clan and Fall of the Roman Empire by Edward Gibbon, and I'm getting ready to start volume two as soon as I clear a couple other things off. Hopefully I'll get to that this week. I would recommend it. It's it's really good. His sentences are just so much pleasure to read, Mr. Gibbon's sentences. Uh, I don't read a lot of nonfiction, so probably some inspiring thing of some kind. I'm starting to wonder if I did this tag before or if I just watched a bunch of people's. If you could hang out with an author all day, who would you pick and why? I don't know, it probably wouldn't be based on their work so much as their behavior. Um, all day. A day could be a long time. I don't know if I'd want to hang out with Robert Howard all day. You know, most of these people are just, most of the type of writers I like, they're probably just typing all day. Or on the other side, they're probably all just drinking all day. Um, Patricia Highsmith, I read, I really like her a lot and um, I like her books a lot. And I liked how she lived her life. She left the United States, traveled around Europe. She lived in Switzerland for a lot of years. 
I read a couple of autobiographies that made me think she probably wasn't that fun to hang out with. Okay, if you can hang out with an author all day. Robert Block's supposed to be kind of a funny guy, funny, amusing, lighthearted guy. I bet a lot of horror writers are fun to hang out with. Stephen King might be fun to hang out with because he strikes me as, as such a normal guy. If he doesn't complain about... Uh, I won't go into it. Um, but, you know, his house looks really cool and stuff, so it would probably just be hanging out with, like, a nice middle-class family, which would be fun. I haven't got a good answer for that. And I will not tag anybody, because uh, I think this has been around for a while, and I am tired of thinking about it already. I really appreciate everyone's well wishes while I recover from this little cold I've got, and I will talk to you soon.